Welcome to this Greg Space Shed video where I'm going to show you five essential tips that you'll need to survive your first blues jam night. Each jam night venue is unique, so there'll be slightly different ways of doing it. You know, there'll be kind of a different way of how you actually get your name on the list to get up to play. There'll be some particular popular blues jam tunes that they do at that venue. But there are common things that you can learn to really help you when you get up on stage, if you want to be confident and really play a great tune and know what you're doing. So I'm going to show you that in this lesson. Later on in the video, I'm going to actually go through the technicalities of how you get your name on the list, that sort of thing. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the first tip, which is make sure that you learn the popular blues forms. Now the 12 bar blues progression is by far the most common blues form. And you really need to know it back to front in, in your sleep and in different keys if you really want to survive your first blues jam night. There are blues keys that you'll come across a lot at blues jam nights. Now these are E, A, C, D and G. There are others, but these are the popular ones. And E and A are the most popular because they're real guitar keys. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the 12 bar blues progression in the key of A. Now you'll find this chord progression and all the material from this lesson, the other bass lines in standard notation and tab in a free PDF booklet. Just look under this video in the description and you can click the link there and you'll get the booklet for free. Now this is really useful for going through the material of this lesson during and after the video. Okay, so that's all free and you can get it in the description. I've also written an article on my website about this subject matter. Um, so it's basically this, this lesson in written form. You can see it all if you prefer to kind of learn that way. Now, if you go to gbshed.com and look under free resources, the tab at the top, then you'll see this under free lessons for bass players. Okay, um, there's a link also underneath this lesson. So that's the written article version of this lesson. So this is the 12 bar progression in A. You can see obviously that it's 12 bars long. So we've got a, a bar of A, a bar of D, and then two bars of A. Now that bar of D in bar two, that's called the quick change. If we go to the D there, which is called four in the key of A, um, that's called the quick four change. So sometimes at a blues jam night, someone might say we're using the quick four. And sometimes you'll just have to listen and kind of hear is the guitarist going to D there. If he doesn't, it will just be four bars of A here. Then we've got two bars of D, two bars of A, a bar of E, a bar of D, a bar of A, and then a bar of E. So this is the kind of most common 12 bar progression. It's also a good idea to know the progression in the Roman numeral system or the number system. Um, so this is what it looks like here. Okay, it's just really called one, called four and five for the 12 bar. Okay, it's really handy because then you can kind of take it around the bass um, into different keys if you think about the chords as numbers. I'm now going to play through this 12 bar progression in A. So I'm just going to use root notes. So we've got A, which is the fifth fret of the E string, D, which is the fifth fret of the A string, and E which is the seventh fret of the A string, okay? That's where we're playing these notes. Now you can change the kind of location of them, like you could play A up here on the seventh fret of the D string, and then chord four and five would be here, okay? Or, okay, they're just root notes. And I'm gonna use shuffle eighth notes. Now it's got this kind of groove with a shuffle feel. If it was straight, it would just be, but it's shuffle. So that's really important when you're at a jam night, like listen what the drummers, if the drummers Is he playing kind of um, straight or is he playing shuffle? So most blues tunes would be in either or of those, okay? Now using these root notes is really effective. It's kind of very simple, but it's very solid. Um, so lots of tunes you just use root notes, but um, you might also want to put some riffs in. 
There's some really common um, cool blues riffs. Now have a listen when you're at the jam to the um, guitarist or if there's a piano player, have a listen. Um, you might be able to pick up a kind of riff that they're playing, just copy them, okay? And also you need to think about locking in with a the drummer. There's lots of things to think about, okay? Um, so just to simplify it, root notes work fine, um, but a riff in certain situations can make it sound more exciting. So I'm gonna use this riff here. It's the sort of thing you'd hear in um, Sweet Home Chicago by Duck Dunn. Um, the Blues Brothers version, Duck Dunn plays this kind of, this sort of bass line there. And what he's doing, that's the sixth here. Okay, he's sliding into it. You can slide a couple of frets below, sounds quite nice. But I'm just going to move... Once you play that riff, you're just going to move it to start on D. And then you can use it to start on E as well. Okay, so once you find a riff, you can just move it around to call calls four and five as well, and that works really well in a blues tune. So I'm going to play that through with the backing track again now. If you want a copy of this backing track, um, I've got that and a slowed down version, 85% tempo. Um, if you head to gbshed.com and look in the shop, you'll see backing tracks and you'll find this one there. So it's a pack that you get with the PDF. Um, so it's only $5.99 um, and it's really handy to have backing tracks like this. It's got live musicians on it. Um, it's as close as you'll kind of get to a live situation at home. Um, so you can try lots of different riffs. It's got nine choruses, I think, this one. So it's quite long, so you can try some different things out. Um, so if you want that, head over to my website and look in the shop, or you can click the link below this video in the description. So once you know this 12 bar progression, make sure you can move it into different keys, the common blues keys that I told you um, earlier on in the video. So make sure you can do that. And also, as well as the 12 bar, you need to know about the eight bar blues. So in songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb by Stevie Ray Vaughan or Worried Life Blues, they're both, um, well, the verse of uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, that's eight bars. Um, so a lot of the time, the first line's missing, the first four bars are missing. Okay, so there's kind of a, f a few standard um, eight bar blues tunes that are used a lot of jam. So just be aware of that. Um, so if it seems really short the sequence, it will be an eight bar blues. And also you get 16 bar blues. Often there's another um, four bars of chord one added to the beginning of the progression to make it 16 bars. Um, so sometimes if you're at a jam, someone will say to you, oh, we'll just do, well, this is a 16 bar blues in G. Okay, you know, they might just say, play another four bars of chord one or something. Hopefully someone's kind of chatting to you about it. Um, but there's a few that you you kind of need to know. Okay, so if you know the 8, 12 and 16 bar blues forms, then that pretty much covers sort of 99% of the tunes that you're going to play. If you're enjoying this video, then don't forget to subscribe to my Greg Spatia YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking the red subscribe button at the corner of the screen and also click the bell. Um, if you click it, then you'll get notified of all my new lessons as they come out. Tip number two is to play through as many blues tunes as you can at home. Get the best of blues albums or the best of Texas blues or whatever. Just get some compilations and play through. They'll have all the popular tunes there. What I've done is on the PDF I've put 15 really popular blues standards um, that's really useful to play through. Things like Crossroads, Pride and Joy, Dust My Broom, The Thrill Is Gone, those kind of ones. Okay. Now, as I said, each... Um, Blues Jam will have slightly different tunes that they play a lot. Um, but these, it would be really good if you kind of start to learn these and kind of listen and work out, is it a 12 bar, is it an 8 bar, is it a 16 bar, that kind of thing. And have a listen to some of the grooves that are played. Um, but, you know, if you're playing a new style, um, it's really handy. Listening's really handy. So have a, make sure you listen to loads of blues and you'll get an idea of what the bass player should be playing, what's kind of expected of you. Okay, you can pick up a lot just by listening. Um, so check out those 15 tunes on the PDF and just have a play through them at home. Tip 
number three is to make sure that you know some standard blues intros, turnarounds and endings. Now I go into this in a lot more depth in my Blues Jam Night Survival Guide which is a video course for bass players. Um, I go into all these details and get you completely prepped up ready to do a jam night. Um, if you want details of that course and how to enrol that kind of thing then have a look in the description again. Um, so that's the Blues Jam Night Survival Guide. Okay, um, but for now I'm just going to kind of talk through intros, turnarounds and endings and just give you a few ideas. Now for blues intros, a lot of the time the band just might kind of start and just hang out on chord one, you know. Sort of maybe coming one by one or uh, wait for the singer and then it kind of starts there. Okay, so that's one option. Another option is you kind of just launch straight into a 12 bar progression um, and say the guitarist, quite often the guitarist will take a solo. Um, through the progression and then the singer will come in again at the beginning of the next chorus. Okay, so sometimes someone would just shout a key, they'll just say, right, um, 12 bar and A, uh, and then you just kind of two, three, go, and just go. So you really need to listen, um, look around you, kind of watch the singer. When they come in, normally that's the beginning of another 12 bar chorus. And when I say chorus, by the way, if you don't know, um, it's not chorus in the traditional sense of the word where you might have the song form of a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, that kind of thing. A chorus, um, when we're talking about it with blues and with jazz, just means once round the progression, so once round the 12 bar, okay? So that's a chorus. Now if you get a chance before you start, you can always ask someone what we're doing for the intro, the ending, that kind of thing. Um, just someone might give you a little idea which will help you out. Now for turnarounds, um, a turnaround is just what you play in the last bar or the last two bars to lead you to the start of the next chorus. Okay. Now in the case of this backing track, I was just playing this turnaround. Okay. So the last four bars. And that's a push into E. Ba ba do ba. A push is when you play before the beat, so you're just playing before beat three. Now the drummer would be kind of ba do ga. We'll be doing that kind of groove, so it's really good to kind of lock in with him. Now when you're playing turnarounds, you don't have to play the exact same thing as say the guitarist or the piano player. Um, you just really want to lock in with the rhythm that the that the drummer's doing. Okay, so that's a really common turnaround. Now when you're playing through those 15 tunes that I suggested, have a listen to what they're playing at the end of each chorus and see if you can pick up a few different turnarounds. Now on to endings. This can be a really hilarious point at a jam. Lots of times bands just can't finish the song. You might have had that same scenario when you're kind of um, jamming with your mates in a rehearsal or something or at a gig. You just can't end the song. Sometimes kind of everyone ends and the drummer just carries playing, you know, so everyone feels they've got to come back in again and this can just go on and on and on so it can be quite funny. Um, so endings are quite tricky um, sometimes. There's a traditional blues ending which is kind of playing three times around the last four bars. That's a kind of really common one. That, that That's used a lot for jazz as well. Sometimes two times around the last four bars. Um, a lot of the time you, the kind of drummer would just cue something. He'll kind of play, he'll slow down, play a row, and then you'll just hear a last, you know, watching for the last sort of bang, um, a button as it's called. Um, so what you need to do is when you're coming to the near the end of a tune, just look around you again. Look at the singer, see if they're cueing, see if there's someone else in the band that's kind of cueing everything, um, or the drummer. If all else fails, just watch the drummer. Um, and you just kind of have to really kind of improvise and work it out a lot of the time. Um, so there are some set endings, but if you haven't rehearsed, you're not really going to know them. Now tip number four is a bit of what I've talked about already and that's to use your ears at all times and really make sure you're communicating, just eye contact's really useful. Now you'd be surprised at the number of people that don't do that when they come up. I've played so many jam nights and the musician comes up and they're just like head down playing, you're trying to communicate with them uh, and there's nothing back from them. So make sure that you're kind of always kind of looking around and clocking all the other players. You need to be kind of, you know, you might think who's soloing at the moment, Where's, what's going to happen next, are we going to go into a, um, another vocal um, chorus, are we coming up to the ending, that kind of thing. So there will invariably be someone that cues a lot of this um, in the house band, maybe the singer a lot or the drummer, just see if you can work out who that is um, and always looking around and, and people really thank you for that if you're communicating with them during the song. 
Tip number five and the last tip is to make sure that you understand jam night etiquette at the particular venue that you're at. So you need to kind of work out how do you get your name on the list? Um, how do you get up to play? Sometimes there's just a bit of paper, you write it on there. A lot of the time there's someone walking around that have a, a pad and they'll kind of, um, if you want to play, you'll need to find them, just say, can I put my name down? And then they might ask you, oh, do you know this tune? They're, they're kind of working out what tunes the band's going to play that night. Um, they might ask you if you know it. If you don't, just say, I don't really know it. Um, and they might ask you what you know as well. Um, so just have a chat to them and you'll be able to work out one tune that you know um, that the band are going to play. Okay, so just that's important that you go and chat to someone or you never get up and play. Now, I would recommend if you've got the opportunity, if it's a local jam to you, to go down a week before you actually want to play and just check it out and see how it's all working. Now, the way that they kind of work these jam nights is you have a house band. They bring all the gear down. Um, most of the time they bring the instruments which they, you know, they bring a kind of one that they're happy to share and everyone just uses the same stuff, they just go up and use it. Sometimes guitarists and bass players bring their own instruments. Um, but again, just go and just sort of have a look the week before and see what people are doing. And always be courteous if someone's lending you their instruments, say thanks to them, that kind of thing, it goes a long way. Okay, so you just need to kind of clock and see how the whole thing works. And if you're not sure, just ask someone, you know, uh, people are generally quite friendly and just ask someone, you know, how do I get up and play, that kind of thing. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to look at all this in a lot more depth, then check out my Blues Jam Night Survival Guide, which is a video course. There's details of that below um, this video in the description. I've also got a bigger blues course called Walk the Blues. Now, that really teaches you how to confidently play bass lines, blues bass lines that sound authentic and exciting and you'll be learning from players like Duck Dung, Tommy Shannon, Gus Thornton, these kind of guys. Um, so um, details again of Walk the Blues uh, below in the description. You can click on that and get more details about the course and also how to enrol. But if you need any details about those then get in touch via the website gbshed.com. Just look on the contact page there. You can send me a message and I'll kind of help you give you more information if you need it. Well that's the end of this video. I hope you found the five tips useful and I really hope that I've encouraged you to get along and, and just go up to a jam night and play. Um, it's really useful to kind of have all these ideas and learn some blues tunes but ultimately you just need to get the experience, just go up and enjoy yourself. Um, so I'd love to hear any stories of you that have played any hilarious stories or just stories of getting up for your first jam night or if you've seen this video and then you've gone and done a jam night, just come back and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear that. I read all the comments and reply to all the comments. If you felt that you got value out of this lesson, then you can always buy me a coffee. This helps to keep the YouTube videos and PDFs free. Um, so you can see the link at the bottom of the screen there, buy me a coffee link, or the link in, is in the description. And if you want to pay by PayPal, there's another link there for buy me a coffee. Um, it says pay with PayPal. Okay, so that just helps to keep all this stuff free. So when you're in the description, make sure you check out all the other links. There's loads of info in there. I put loads of info under each lesson. Um, you can get the PDF booklet, which has PDFs for the first 150 YouTube videos. You can get that from the shop. There's a link there. That's really useful if you want to work on lots of different areas of your bass playing. Um, you can get all the PDFs free, but you have to download them all individually. So this is kind of saves a lot of time. Um, so again, that's in the shop as well. If you go to gbshed.com, just look in the shop. There's loads of stuff there. T-shirts, got Walk the Blues t-shirt, um, Low in Lover t-shirts. Um, there's loads of stuff. So go and check out the description and the website. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share the video. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed. See you very soon, hopefully, in the next video.